Hi, I'm Brian Watchers of VMware Education. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to invoke actions from within orchestrator workflows. This video is part of a series of vidéos in which we're exploring vCenter Orchestrator. In the preceding video, we took a look at how to set up input presentation. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how to invoke actions. In Orchestrator, actions are reusable building blocks that allow us to perform a specific task. For instance, in the screenshot over on the right, you can see a, an action called git virtual CD-ROM. Now, Orchestrator comes with over 300 actions. So much of the code that you otherwise might need to write yourself has already been written for you. You just use these actions as building blocks in your workflows. Actions are analogous to functions in other programming languages. Um, other names for similar concepts are methods, procedures, uh, whatever whatever programming language you've used, it has some sort of mechanism such as functions. Actions are like functions. Actions are organized in the v, in the orchestrator client are organized in modules. The modules, as you can see in the screenshot, are the little folder icons. And within the folder icons, the little gear-shaped icons represent the actions themselves. The code that's associated with each of these actions, uh, much like the code in a scriptable task, the code for actions is written in JavaScript. To invoke an action within your workflow, what you're going to do is drag and drop an action schema element into your workflow. You'll then search for the specific workflow that you want to invoke. Then you'll bind the action's input parameters. Actions can have multiple input parameters but they can only have one output parameter. So you'll bind the input parameters, and you'll bind the one and only output parameter. That output parameter by default is called action result, but you should always rename action result to something more appropriate. In this demonstration, I'll illustrate how to invoke an action from within a workflow. So to begin, I'm creating a workflow called resize VM VRAM. In order to call an action, all we need to do is drag an action element into our schema. When you drop the action schema element onto your schema, the first thing you're going to be asked to do is to specify which action you want to call. Now, if I just hit enter here, I'll get a list of lots and lots of actions, but I'm interested in one in particular, one titled change VM RAM. Uh, this action is an action that was that is provided with Orchestrator along with over 300 others. Uh, this is an action that's written by VMware, which, as its name suggests, will take a virtual machine and change the amount of v virtual RAM allocated to that virtual machine. So I'm going to choose change VRAM, excuse me, change VM RAM as the action to call. And when I do so, uh, you'll notice up top here that we're given the option of setting up all of this, this action's input parameters and, and other variables in one fell swoop, but we're going to purposely do this a slightly slower way to begin. I'll begin by selecting the action schema element itself and editing it. Now, in this particular action, if we take a look at the visual binding tab, we can see information about the action. So the action is called change VM RAM. And as we can see here, this action requires two inputs, a virtual machine and amount of memory. This is the virtual machine that we want to modify, and this is the amount of memory that we want the virtual machine to have. Additionally, the change VM RAM action has one output, uh, uses the default name action result, um, and that's going to return something called a task. Um, we're ultimately not going to do anything in this particular demonstration with this task, but we'll explain shortly what it would be used for. Now, you already know from previous videos in this series that one way you could go create and bind a variable to VM and do the same for memory would be to go to the inputs tab to create the variable and then to the end tab to bind to it. But while we're here, I want to show you a little trick. When you drag and drop an action or a workflow into your workflow, if you click on this triangle here and simply drag 
over to the left. And, uh, I want this particular parameter to be an input parameter, so I'm dragging up top, not down below. Below would create an attribute. I don't want an attribute, I want an input parameter, so I'm going to click and drag and drop here. Notice it gives us the opportunity to rename the input parameter. The, the name of the variable as it's known to change vmram will always be vm, but what we're being offered the option to do here is to change the name that the parameter is known as in the workflow itself. To keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and continue using the same name. Uh, notice that the description is already filled out because the person who created this action has already written a description for the variable, so I'm just inheriting that value. I could potentially change the type of the variable if in other circumstances, but in the case of an action, we want the type that is specified here. And we told it by dragging over here that we want an input parameter, so I'll go with that choice. Since it's an input parameter, I'm not going to specify the value of that variable right now, but rather the user is going to specify it when they run the workflow. So in effect, I'm changing, in this particular case, nothing at all. I'm simply clicking the OK button. And then I'll do the same thing with memory. Again, I could set up memory as an attribute, but in this case, it's going to make more sense to set it up as an input parameter. Uh, later on in this video series and in our training, we talk about uh, the, the rationale behind setting something up as an input parameter versus an output parameter versus an attribute. But for right now, we'll just set this up as an attribute, excuse me, an input parameter. And once again, we're not going to change the name or its description. We'll just click OK. Then we're going to do the same thing with this output parameter. Uh, if I want the caller of the workflow to see whatever this action result thing is, I could drag it over here to an output parameter. But in cases where we don't want the user to actually see the, the values that we're um, calculating here, we can just create an attribute. Once again, we get to name this thing. Uh, if I scoot this aside here, you'll notice that the type of object is, is something called a task. In, um, in various contexts within Orchestrator and in vCenter itself, there are various actions that we perform um, that don't complete instantaneously, but rather they, they can take a period of time. In those particular cases, rather than um, always waiting for the task to complete, an action such as change VM RAM can simply pass back an object that describes the task that's running in the background. Uh, in this particular case, we're not going to make any use of that value. I'm just going to simply rename action result to something else. Again, you should always rename action result. Otherwise, if you have multiple actions within your workflow and they all refer to action result, you'll have a tough time telling one action result from another. Now, just before we uh, save this and go run this workflow, I want to make certain that you notice that when we select variables, whether they be input parameters, output parameters, or attributes, when we select parameters in this interface, down below, it's providing a description of uh, the variable that we selected. It tells us the name of the VM, tells us the type, so notice the same thing we see here, the name and the type, and it also gives us a description of the variable in question. Now, this is, once again, why it's so very important that you set up descriptions everywhere throughout the Orchestrator uh, client interface. In the next video, when I show you how to create an action, I'm going to, once again, emphasize you need to type a description for each of the input parameters that you create so that whoever calls your action will know what the parameters are for. But we'll take a look at that in the next video. In the meantime, I'm going to simply click Close. I'll validate my workflow to make certain everything looks okay. We're green, so that looks good. I'll click Save and Close. And now, when we run the workflow, the virtual machine is going to be reconfigured. So let's go look at the virtual machine we're going to modify. The virtual machine itself has currently 512 megabytes. It's a virtual machine called First Virtual Machine. And that's the VM that we're going to modify. Uh, actually, just before we run this workflow, there's one other thing I wanted to show you that's not uh, related to actions, but you ought to learn this at some point anyways. I'm editing the workflow again, and uh, whereas normally I've been grabbing schema elements from the generic section of the schema palette, 
I'm going to go to the basic section and I'm going to drag out a sleep schema element. And the reason why I'm going to do this is otherwise this workflow is going to run so fast that we're not going to see the change occur. So I'm going to purposely introduce a little delay uh, before I set up the parameters for the action by uh, clicking edit. But just like an action, this schema element for sleep allows me a slightly different way to set up the input parameters to the schema element. In this case, I'm going to simply say this, uh, this sleep schema element has a variable called sleep time. I'm going to explicitly set its value to 10 seconds. Just simply introducing a 10 second delay. We'll save and close. And now we'll run the workflow. When I run the workflow, I first have to specify which virtual machine I'm interested in. So I'm drilling down to the virtual machine called First Virtual Machine. I'll select that virtual machine. Currently, the virtual machine is configured for half a gigabyte of memory. I'm going to reconfigure the virtual machine through this workflow for four gigabytes of virtual memory. So I'll click Submit. We've got about 10 seconds to switch over here. Here's my virtual machine. It's been about five seconds. And shortly, if you watch right here, you should see that the virtual machine's memory configuration changes. Down below, you can see a task is running. And up above here, we can see that the virtual machine's memory configuration has been increased to four gigabytes. Now, I'd like to point out that we just made that change to the virtual machine without writing a single line of code. We didn't have to know anything about the inner details of how this particular action worked. We just simply needed to know how to hook up its inputs and outputs. If you ever are interested in elements such as um, this action or other workflows, you can search for the element. If you select it, the action, it's not a workflow in this case, it's an action, is uh, selected for you automatically. And uh, conceptually what you ought to be able to do here is to click the pencil icon to edit it, but notice that all the actions that are provided by VMware are not editable. However, that doesn't mean you can't see what they're doing. Rather, you simply have to copy it. So I'm going to duplicate this action into, I can call it the same thing. I'm going to put it into a different module though. I'm going to put it into my own module, which I've previously created called com vmware.brianw. And now in my module, I can see, by editing, I can see the actual scripting that was performed by the action. I can change this, I can modify it, I can um, change it to suit my own needs. But in this video, we've illustrated how to invoke actions in the next video in this series of videos, we're going to show you how to create your own actions. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check out the other videos in the series to learn more about vCenter Orchestrator. For in-depth, hands-on orchestrator training, enroll in the VMware vCenter Orchestrator Develop Workflows class and connect with other orchestrator developers online at communities.vmware.com. Thank you.